The most important thing you do for your success is to take control of the suggestive elements in your environment. Be sure that what you are seeing and listening to is consistent with the goals that you want to achieve. Listen to educational audio programs in your car. The average person drives 12,000 to 25,000 miles per year, which works out to between 500 and 1,000 hours per year that the average person spends in his or her car. You can become an expert in your field by simply listening to educational audio programs as you drive from place to place. Attend seminars given by experts in your field, take additional courses and learn everything you possibly can learn from the experts. Ask them questions, write them letters, read their books, read their articles, and listen to people with proven track records in the area in which you want to be successful. It can save you years of work and thousands and thousands of dollars. Have a vision for yourself and a vision for your life. The key to having a vision is to have a dream. They say in the song, You've got to have a dream if you want to make a dream come true. Then you can fulfill your dreams. All the great movers and shakers of all of history have been dreamers. They've been people with dreams, they've been people with visions. All leaders have vision. In the book of Solomon it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. And the metaphysical meaning of that is that where people lack vision, they perish inside because they lose the excitement and the thrill of life. And what most people do, because of negative experiences, because of fear of failure and so on, is they, if they have a vision at all, they tone it down so it's so small and so, so safe that it doesn't turn them on, it doesn't excite them, and they wonder why life isn't exciting. A beautiful line I read not long ago said, the best way to predict the future is to create it, which means to have a vision. And even though the vision is in the air or the sky, then build a foundation under your dreams. And when you see men and women who rise from poverty and obscurity to fame and renown, you invariably see someone who had a vision of what they could be and have and do that was far beyond what they were. Every one of us has had an experience at one time when we were small. We had a vision of growing up and having our own cars. And as we grew older, we had a vision of having our own homes and our own families. As we grew older, we had a vision of traveling and going to Europe. Wow. We fulfill all our visions. The wonderful thing is this, is that we always tend to achieve our goals. The problem is that our goals are set so low that even when we do achieve them, they don't turn us on. They don't fill us with enthusiasm. So, dream big dreams if you like and focus on results, not activities. This is the key. Be clear about the results that you're trying to accomplish. This is one of the keys of peak performance, by the way. All peak performers are results oriented. All losers, underachievers, tend to be activity oriented. And in activity orientation, what they do is they work very, very hard. Sometimes they work frantically. Sometimes they work longer hours than you do. But they lose sight of the results. Ben Trigo, the strategic thinker, said the very worst thing in the world is to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. And many of us work very, very hard to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. Anybody who's ever had employees will tell you that every single day you come across your employees doing something very diligently, but it's completely irrelevant to the success of the business. So, focus on results. Here's a key question to ask yourself when in your working life. I think it's one of the most important key questions. I'll give you two. Number one is, what results are expected of me? Not what activities, but what results or what outputs. Well, what I supposed to produce in my job? A second question you can ask yourself is, why am I on the payroll? Why am I on the payroll? So I'm going to give you a simple word that you can use for the rest of your career, which will double your income. And the word is, how? From now on, whenever you have a goal, the only question you ask is, how? Whenever you have a problem to solve, the only question you ask is, how? If you have an obstacle to overcome, the only question you ask is, how? 
Now, the wonderful thing about the word how is that it triggers ideas. And the ideas are all for actions that you can take immediately. And when you take those ideas, you start to get feedback, which enables you to correct your course and take even better steps to achieve your goals. So the average person, when they have a problem, complains and blames other people about the problem. Top people, when they have a problem or goal, they simply say, how could I achieve this goal? And they try this and they try that and they try something else. But it never occurs to them that they will not eventually be successful. So they think about what they want and how to get it most of the time. The key to success is, first of all, understanding. And understanding is you. As understanding is understanding yourself and understanding your world. And that takes some time. It takes some study. And the second is effort. You have to work. You have to be willing to make the efforts necessary. When I began to study Spansky and Gorchev many years ago, they called it the work. And there's always work that you have to do. If you want to become physically fit, if you want to lose weight, there's a lot of work that you have to do. Unfortunately, most people, the bottom 80% of people, are lazy. Actually, there are three types of lazy. They're lazy, very lazy, and bone lazy. And one of the greatest problems we have in our society today is lazy people who want the rewards that hardworking people get. They call the lazy people the average person. They call the successful people the millionaires and billionaires without realizing that all of those people started with nothing. Many of them were poor. Many of them were poor. Many of them were immigrants. And it took them 20 to 30 years to become financially successful. There was a politician who ran for the presidency some years ago and he said, those who've been lucky at the gaming tables of life should be forced to share their winnings with those who have not been as fortunate. Uh, that's the mindset. In other words, if you're successful, it's just luck, you know. So therefore, you don't really deserve it. So it should be taken from you and given to others. The fact is that it takes tremendous effort for you and I to achieve any kind of success. But the fact is, that there are no obstacles standing between you and any goal that you can set for yourself. You just have to learn how to do it. Every single person who is successful today was once a failure. Everyone in the top 10% started in the bottom 10%. And they set very clear goals and they learned specific things and they did things differently from the average person. And their life took off like that Mercedes. Ben's touching on the gas pedal. Their lives changed. But sometimes, the absence of one piece of knowledge can hold you back for years. And I say, never allow yourself to be held back because of the absence of a piece of knowledge or skill. All business skills are learnable. All money-making skills are learnable. All success skills are learnable. Everybody who knows them now at one time did not know them at all. And so you can learn anything you need to learn. Here's what we have found with regard to business. All business skills are learnable. You can learn any business skill that can help you to increase your earning ability. If you're in sales, you can learn any sales skill. If you want to earn money or make money, you can learn any money making skill. All business skills are learnable skills. Now you may not be able to play a violin like a great violinist or be a great athlete or a great athlete or a great artist because those are special skills. But in terms of business, you can learn any business skill because every person who has a business skill today at one time did not have that skill. And then they said that skill would help me. So they studied and practiced. And they took courses and they became good in that skill. I had a very poor education. So I thought other people were smarter than me. And if other people are smarter than you, it means that you are dumber than they are. And then I thought, well, if they're smarter than me, then they're worth more than I am. But if other people are worth more, then you must be worth less. Now, the feeling of being worthless is the biggest single problem in the world today. The feeling of being not very valuable and not very important, which leads to low self-esteem, negativity, anger, and depression. It leads to giving up, not even trying. It's the biggest problem in the world today. And high self-esteem, confidence in yourself is the greatest blessing. But here's what I found. 
Nobody is smarter than you. Nobody's better than you. Some people have different talents and abilities, but talents and abilities, but talents and abilities are spread quite evenly. So you have more talent and ability than you could use in 100 lifetimes. The essence of all human wisdom is self-knowledge, and self-knowledge and self-understanding is to understand who you are, why you think and feel the way you do. Because that foundation is called interpersonal intelligence. It's been identified at Harvard as one of the foundation intelligences of great success in life. Really understanding yourself, understanding your strengths and weaknesses. You'll find that superior people are very honest about themselves. They know that they're not good at certain things, and they're not defensive, and they're not defensive. And they're better at other things, and they're quite proud of it. If you look at all spiritual doctrines, all religion, all meditation, all philosophy, all great thought and all of history, it is to bring people to the point of thinking where they enjoy complete peace of mind. The rule is that if you set peace of mind as your highest goal, you'll probably never make another mistake. If you set peace of mind as your highest goal, everything else will fall into place. And if you achieve everything else in the world, but you do not achieve your own peace of mind, you will consider yourself a failure. You'll be unhappy, you'll be frustrated, you'll be irritated, you'll be irritated, you'll be angry, and so on. So peace of mind is the critical thing. And so, you have to keep asking yourself, what are the things that occur that give me peace of mind? When do I enjoy the highest level of peace of mind? And when you start, when you have no fear and no negative emotions, your mind is like a vacuum. What flows in is complete peace. When you have solved all your problems but everything is fine, you just feel completely at peace. And those are what are called the peak experiences of your life. Those are when you are the happiest of all. And this is not something that occurs accidentally. You walk along and you trip over some peace of mind and pick it up and put it in your pocket. You have to deliberately design your life so that you feel a great sense of peace. And of course, an extension of that is happiness. Aristotle said the ultimate aim of all human behavior is to be happy, just to achieve your own happiness. When Anne Rand, a renowned materialist, said many years ago, she said the ultimate measure of how well you're doing as a human being is how genuinely happy you are. And if you can accomplish everything else in the world, but you're not a happy person and you don't enjoy inner peace, well then, to that degree you fail. You read these stories of people who are extremely successful, make an enormous amount of money, they snort coke, they drink themselves into oblivion, they go on tours around the country like Charlie Sheen, and then some of them go home and shoot themselves. And they've got all this money and all this fame and all this glory, but they have no sense of inner peace. So we have this little diagram here, internal versus external locus of control. This is what psychologists use. They say you have an internal locus of control here where you are happy and then you have a scale and you have an external locus of control. The internal locus of control is where you feel that you're in charge of your own life. You make your own decisions. Americans in general, by the way, have a much higher sense of inner control than most countries in the world. Europeans, 58% of Germans, for example, in highly structured economies believe that they have little or no control over their future. A person with an internal locus of control says, I make my own decisions. I am where I am, and what I am, and what I am, and what I am because of myself. I'm in charge of my life. A person with an external locus of control feels that other people are in charge of their life, their boss, their bills, and so on. Now you are here and you are moving in one direction or another with every decision that you make. The good news is that when you develop an internal locus of control, you feel really happy and strong, and you're much more positive and creative. And that's the goal that we're aiming for. The people with a high internal locus of control feel really good about themselves. They feel powerful. They feel empowered. They feel strong. Here's an interesting point. You can never give away control except to other people. You can give away your control to other people, but you still remain responsible. So control begins with your thoughts, and your thoughts determine your feelings, and your feelings, and your feelings then determine your actions. For the goals and ideals give you a sense of meaning and purpose. They make you wake up in the morning, and you're excited. You can hardly get going. 
There are a lot of people who love to sleep because they've got no reason to get up. People who are doing something and achieving something that's important, they look upon sleep as an irritation. It's something you have to do so that you're fully refreshed. But you do it as quickly as possible so you can get back to doing the stuff that makes you happy. It gives you peace of mind, fills your financial coffers and so on. There are several core areas that you must continually evaluate and assess. Number one is, what are your core competencies? What are you good at? Each individual or business starts off with a set of core skills or competencies that enable them to produce a product or service that the market wants, needs, and is willing to pay for. Each employee starts off with core competencies that enable them to make a contribution. Each company starts off with core competencies that enable them to survive and thrive in a competitive business market. The first question you must ask is, what is your company especially good at? What does your company do in an exceptional fashion? What are the special talents and skills and abilities of the people in your company that enable you to produce your products or services in a superior fashion? And remember, whatever got you to where you're at today is not enough to get you any further. If you're not continually upgrading your knowledge and skills in your core areas, you're actually falling behind. If you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Now, here's another question with regard to core capabilities. What are you personally very good at doing? Look upon yourself as a bundle of resources that could do a variety of things. What are your special, unique, individual talents and skills that enable you to do an excellent job and achieve a worthwhile result? Again, you must be continually adding to your skill base and upgrading your existing skills just to stay even in the current market. What additional competencies will you need as a business and as an individual in the future? What are the trends in your industry? What is it that customers will be wanting one year from today and what competencies will you have to develop in order to serve your customers at the highest possible level one year from today? Spiritual development and spiritual understanding have been the goals of great minds throughout all of human history. In every culture, society, and civilization, spiritual traditions have emerged and developed spontaneously, often many thousands of miles apart. There seems to be within each person a desire to connect with something higher and greater than themselves. This inner drive seems to arise naturally and normally, often without any guidance or instruction. The great mystics and spiritual teachers of human history are those who have emerged to teach people how they can best satisfy this spiritual craving. The whole issue of spiritual development is complex and controversial. Each person who believes in a faith or a denomination is usually convinced that his or her ideas about God or a higher power are correct, and all others are wrong or misguided to some degree. The most terrible wars in human history have been religious wars fought over small differences in dogma, doctrine, or interpretation. Since most religions preach that God is a God of love, compassion, and understanding, it's sometimes amazing to look at what has been done and what continues to be done in the name of God. I've studied spiritual traditions for more than 30 years. I very much believe that spiritual development is the highest and most important form of development that a person can pursue. Rightly understood, spiritual development is the key to peace, prosperity, happiness, and personal fulfillment. About 325 BC, the philosopher Aristotle wrote his Nicomachean Ethics, one of history's finest explanations of the human condition. He begins with the observation that the common denominator of mankind is the desire to be happy. He concludes that the question of how to achieve this happiness is the fundamental question of philosophy. In 1895, Sigmund Freud of Vienna introduced his theory of psychoanalysis. His fundamental conclusion followed directly from Aristotle more than 3,000 years before. He called it the pleasure principle. Freud taught that human beings are motivated to move toward pleasure and to avoid pain, to move toward comfort and away from discomfort, whether it's physical, emotional, financial, or of any other kind. Modern economists and psychologists agree 
that every human action is stimulated by a felt dissatisfaction of some kind. Without this felt dissatisfaction, no action takes place. The individual remains content and satisfied. The primary driving forces of human behavior begin with discontent, dissatisfaction, discomfort or unhappiness of some kind. Action takes place when the individual perceives a better state or condition where this unhappiness or discontent can be relieved. The individual then acts to achieve this goal. The action is either successful or unsuccessful, but all human behavior, from the beginning of man to today, is aimed at achieving a higher level of happiness than the one that currently exists. The highest human good is, and always has been, peace of mind. In fact, you can measure the success of your life at any given time by your level of happiness and peace of mind, by how good you feel about yourself and your world. Peace of mind is only possible when you feel completely satisfied and content inside. Peace of mind comes when you follow your intuition, your inner voice, and you do and say the things that feel exactly right for you. Now, no one can determine what will make another person happy because each person is unique. Each person has different needs and desires and is motivated by different goals and results. Each of us can only decide for ourselves what makes us happy personally. And each of us can only decide what makes us happy by listening to our inner voice and then by following its guidance and direction. In spiritual development, there are a series of simple principles that all religious traditions seem to have in common. The first principle is that there is a God who loves us, who knows us, who understands us, and who wants the very best for us. Some people refer to this as the God mind, the oversoul, universal intelligence, or the creative power. It doesn't really matter what it's called, even if it's just called nature. It is a comforting thought, though, to believe and accept that there is a great power in the universe that we can turn to, that desires are good, and that will guide us to always doing and saying the right things if we will, but listen to the voice within us. Intuition is one of the greatest gifts of mankind. Every great thinker has been amazed at this wonderful power, and the more you listen to your intuition, the better and the more accurate it becomes. The more you listen to your inner voice, the louder and clearer it becomes in guiding you to make the right decisions in each area of your life. One of the great spiritual practices is that of solitude and contemplation. Most people have never tried the practice of solitude in their entire lives. Yet, it is an extraordinarily positive experience. The French writer, Blaise Pascal, wrote, Almost all the problems of mankind arise from the inability to be alone with oneself in a room for any period of time. If ever you desire an answer to any question in your life, a solution to any dilemma, the resolution to any difficulty, practice solitude. Go and sit quietly by yourself with no noise or distractions for 60 minutes. It's been said that men and women begin to become great when they begin to spend time alone with themselves, listening to their inner voices. During this period of solitude, your mind will clear like silt clears in a bucket of muddy water. After about 30 minutes of quiet contemplation, you will feel calm and relaxed. You will feel happy and peaceful. You will feel at one with the universe. And then, at a certain moment as you sit there, ideas and insights will begin to flow through your mind. Whatever your current situation or dilemma, the right answer for you will come to you at exactly the right time, in exactly the right form. When you arise from your period of solitude and take action on that answer, you will find that it is exactly the right thing for you to do. This is the height of spiritual perception and spiritual connection. The second principle that all the spiritual traditions have in common is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Someone once wrote that there may be a better principle for human living than the golden rule, but no one has yet discovered it. The great truths of life are simple. It's amazing how many problems, both personal and social, that could be resolved if everyone decided to treat other people the way they would like to be treated. Listen to people the way you would like to be listened to. Sell your products and services the way you would like others to sell their products and services to you. Be courteous and respectful to other people the same way you would like them to be courteous and respectful to you. Be patient and understanding with people 
when they make mistakes, the same way you would like them to be patient and understanding with you when you make mistakes. The third principle common to all religious traditions was best articulated by Immanuel Kant, the Dutch philosopher. He called it the universal maxim. He said, live your life as though your every act were to become a universal law. This is an amazing idea. Imagine if everyone lived and behaved as if everyone else was going to do exactly what he or she did. Imagine that everyone was going to treat everybody else exactly the way you treat them. This universal maxim is a tremendous discipline and guide for individual behavior. It harms no one and it helps everyone. It requires perfect truthfulness, honesty and justice. The universal maxim requires that we treat everyone alike. Living by the universal maxim requires the utmost of spiritual and personal discipline from ourselves. Here are four questions that you can ask and answer for yourself on a regular basis. They help you to incorporate the universal maxim into your life. The first question is, what kind of a world would my world be if everyone in it were just like me? Most of the problems in the world today could be solved if everyone could say that this would be a better world if everyone behaved as they do. The second question is, what kind of a country would my country be if everyone in it were just like me? Most of our social and political problems are a direct result of the refusal of people to ask this question about themselves, about others, and about our country. The third question is, what kind of a company would my company be if everyone in it was just like me? This is one of the best questions for creating a terrific place to work. The more people there are in a company who can answer this question positively, the better company it becomes in every way. The final question is this. What kind of a family would my family be if everyone in it was just like me? Imagine if everyone in your family treated everyone else in your family the way you treat everyone else in your family. What kind of a family would it be? When a book proposal is accepted by the publisher but the final manuscript has not yet been submitted, it is called a work in progress. In the same sense, each one of us is a work in progress. Each of us has a long way to go. Each of us has ample room for improvement. There are many things that each of us can do to become better human beings and better members of our societies. Asking ourselves these four questions regularly gives us guidance and insights into the specific changes and improvements we can make in ourselves. What are your values with regard to spiritual development? Do you believe in the values of peace, joy, love, compassion? forgiveness, self-control, faith, and happiness, and personal fulfillment. Select the values that you consider to be the most important. Organize your values by priority from what is more important all the way through to what is least important. Put an X on your most important value and then begin to think about how you could express this value more often in your words and actions. Discipline yourself to live in harmony with your most important spiritual value. Whenever you slip, catch yourself and begin living and behaving by this value. Once again, in time, you will program this value into your subconscious mind. You will instill this value as a permanent part of your personality. You will actually transform your own character. You will become a finer and better person in every sense of the word. Now what is your vision for yourself and your life if you had complete peace of mind? Your inner life was perfect in every way, and you were completely happy and fulfilled. How would you be living your life? Think back over the happiest moments of your life. Think about the times when you felt the greatest joy and inner peace. What was going on at that time? Who were you with? What were you doing? What have been your most joyous experiences in life? What could you do to create a situation where you could enjoy more of those happy experiences in the year ahead. What should your focal point be? What one change or decision could you make that would move you more rapidly to a higher level of spiritual and inner development toward a higher level of happiness and peace? Practice zero base thinking. Look at your life and ask yourself if there is anything that you are doing that knowing what you now know you wouldn't get into again today. Is there any relationship, personal or business, that you wouldn't get into again today if you had to do it over? 
is there any part of your business, any product or service or process or activity that you wouldn't start up again today knowing what you now know? Is there any investment or drain on your time, your emotion or your energy or money that you would not get into again today if you had to do it over knowing what you now know? Sometimes the decision to stop doing something that is no longer a source of joy or happiness in your life can bring you more peace and satisfaction than anything else. And you always know what it is. The only question is whether or not you have the courage and character to take the action that you know you need to take. What are your goals for spiritual and inner development? What specific measurable steps can you take to achieve higher levels of happiness and personal satisfaction? What can you do today to eliminate the people, forces, and influences in your life that are disrupting your happiness and peace of mind? Remember that there are only four ways to bring about the changes you desire. You can do more of some things or you can do less of others. You can start doing something or you can stop doing something else altogether. Which is it to be next? What habits and behaviors do you need to develop to become a happier person and to enjoy greater peace of mind in everything you do? Many people develop the habit of reading spiritually each morning and thinking about how they can practice what they read during the day. Others develop the habit of daily solitude. Some develop the habit of attending a church that they enjoy on a regular basis. One spiritual habit is to donate your time to working with people who are less fortunate than you are. Spending time with other spiritually developed people is another great habit that helps you to develop spiritually as well. The daily activities that you could begin practicing to increase your levels of spiritual development and inner peace. Whatever you do, anything that you repeat over and over again will eventually become a new habit. What are the specific activities that you would like to develop into habits? Finally, make a specific action commitment. Decide upon one step that you are going to take today to begin moving toward higher levels of spiritual development and peace of mind. Either get in or get out. Either start doing something or stop doing something else. Make a decision of some kind and then take action on your decision. Determine your focal point. Put an X on the one decision or activity that can have the most immediate positive impact on your level of personal happiness and inner joy. Whatever it is, just do it. Perhaps the most important spiritual principle of all is for you to develop an unshakable trust in the universe and in goodness of God or of a higher power. Look for the good in every situation. Look for something beneficial that you can gain from every setback or difficulty. Have complete confidence and faith that everything that is happening to you is happening for a good reason. However, it appears at the moment. The reason is usually to help you to be more successful and happy in the future. Norman Vincent Peale used to say, when God wants to send you a gift, he wraps it up in a problem. The bigger the gift that God wants to send you, the bigger the problem he wraps it up in. In hundreds of interviews for the most successful men and women of the age, the researchers found that they all had a single thinking quality in common. They all believed that within every difficulty and problem they faced, there was something good or helpful that they could benefit from. Look for the valuable lesson in every difficulty. Have complete faith that there is a divine intelligence that cares about you and which is guiding your path every step of the way. When you begin practicing this way of thinking, you'll be amazed at the wonderful things that will happen in your life. One of the great spiritual principles is for you to identify the biggest single problem in your life today. What is it? Then look into that problem and imagine that it has been sent to you at this moment to teach you something that you need to know. Imagine that this problem has been artfully constructed to contain one or more valuable lessons that you absolutely need to learn to move to the next level of success and happiness in your life. All great men and women are men and women of faith. They have complete confidence that everything is unfolding for their good, even if they cannot see it at the moment. They believe that every setback has a benefit or opportunity hidden within it. They have complete faith that everything is happening as it should and that in the end everything will turn out well and they are seldom disappointed. Spiritual development and peace of mind are the highest of all human goods and benefits. Spiritual development enhances your life and fills you with joy and satisfaction. It makes you happy 
It gives you tremendous pleasure. Best of all, it is available to you and to everyone at no cost. Developing spiritually and enjoying peace of mind simply requires that you live in truth with yourself and with everyone around you. Spiritual development requires that you trust in the universe to guide and direct your path. Spiritual development requires that you take time each day to sit quietly by yourself and to listen for the still small voice within. Spiritual development requires that you follow the guidance of your intuition and believe absolutely that everything is working out for the best. When you begin to live in truth with yourself and others and trust your inner voice, you will probably never make another mistake. You will make your life into something truly wonderful and inspiring. And it's completely up to you. Now let's wrap up with seven rules for success in the 21st century. These are some of the most important ideas I have learned in more than 30 years of studying successful people. Rule number one. Your life only gets better when you get better. Your outer world will always be a reflection of your inner world. If you want to improve the quality of your outer world, you must go to work on yourself. And since there's no limit on how much better you can get, there's no limit to how much better you can make your life. Rule number two for the 21st century, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that really matters is where you're going. Never allow yourself to be slowed down or held back by events that have occurred in your past. Learn from them and let them go. Resolve to keep yourself focused on the future and where you're going most of the time. And since your future is only limited by your imagination, there are no limits to what you can achieve in the months and years ahead. Rule number three. Anything worth doing well is worth doing poorly at first. Remember, everything is hard before it's easy. A primary reason that people do not realize their full potentials is that they try something new and when it doesn't work perfectly the first time, they quit and go back to their old lower level of performance. Anything worth doing well is worth doing poorly at first and it's often worth doing poorly several times until you master it. Rule number four. You are only as free as your options. The well-developed alternatives you have available to you. One of the greatest human goods is personal freedom, and your freedom is largely determined by your choices. The more options you have, the greater freedom and self-confidence you have. You should be continually developing new options throughout your career. Never hang all of your hopes for success on a single possibility. Rule number five. Within every problem or difficulty you experience, there is the seed of an equal or greater advantage or benefit. Look for the good in every problem. Look for the valuable lesson in every adversity or setback. Look for something that you can gain from every difficulty and you will always find it. Rule number six. You can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. You are designed by nature to be a learning organism. Anything that anyone else has learned. Within reason, you can learn as well. You can acquire any kind of knowledge and develop any skill that you need to rise to the top of your field. And finally, rule number seven. The only real limits on what you can do or be are the limits you accept in your own mind. As Shakespeare said, nothing is but thinking makes it so. Henry Ford said, if you believe you can do a thing or you believe you cannot, in either case, you're probably right. You have within you right now all the talents and abilities you could ever want or need to achieve any goal or dream you could set for yourself. The only question you ever have to ask is, how badly do you want it? If you want anything badly enough and you're willing to persist long enough, nothing can stop you from eventually achieving it. Good luck. If you enjoyed this program from Master Motivator and Success Coach, Brian Tracy, you are probably the type of high achiever that would benefit from Brian Tracy's personal success coaching program. This one on one coaching program is unlike any self-development tool ever offer. Imagine spending 12 weeks with your own coach who has been personally trained by Brian Tracy. Your coach will aid you in building your life strategies, guiding you as you take action steps toward making your greatest desires a reality. If you are like many, you often set goals that sometimes lack the motivation to carry them through. With the ongoing nurturing and guidance of your personal coach and this outstanding program, 
You will be accountable for the changes you want to make in your life and you'll soon see those changes becoming a reality. Created exclusively for Nightingale Connect by Brian Tracy. This program has had massive life changing results on those who have committed themselves to it. It consists of a minimum of 12 weeks of 30 minute one on one telecoaching sessions with a trained personal coach. Accompanying the program are 12 cassette tapes, one for each week of study, along with a guidebook. This extraordinary program focuses on every aspect of your life and helps integrate and balance your life success skills along with your business growth. Brian Tracy's personal success coaching program offers you guidance in the areas of strategic planning, intelligence, health and fitness, power, career success, time management, financial planning, life success, relationships, goal setting, leadership, and building character. Your life will magically transform as you turn your conceptualized thoughts into active steps toward achieving your goals. Brian Tracy's personal success coaching program is one of the most comprehensive, powerful self-development programs to date and is designed to fit your goals, dreams, and desires both personally and professionally. Act now today and call in to receive further information in your free personal success profile with one of our trained personal development representatives. Designed with Brian Tracy, this profile will identify your strengths and pinpoint your growth opportunities. We offer this analysis to you at no cost and no obligation. So don't delay. To register for this outstanding coaching program or to receive your free personal success profile, call Nightingale Connett now at this number. 1-877-297-9799. That's 1-877-297-9799. And ask for Brian Tracy's personal success coaching profile. It's one phone call that could change your life.